Roar Nation, Promise Keepers is back July 31st, 2020. Estimated 80,000 men will be gathering at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Speakers are going to rock the house. It's going to be a full lineup. And on top of that, worship is going to be amazing. Why am I telling you so far in advance? Because tickets are on sale and they're slowly selling out. So that being said, I hope I see you there. I am planning on going. Go to promisekeepers.org to get info and tickets. Again, go to promisekeepers.org. See you there. Welcome to Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You, the podcast that focuses on Christians that are active in everyday life. Join in as we speak to everyone from successful business owners to educators to athletes about their faith and how it helps them reach out and revolutionize those around them to do the same. And now get ready to roar with your host, the voice of manifestation, John Fuller. Hey, Roar Nation, John Fuller and excited for today. If you guys remember back in the past, my good friend, Matt Dietz did a show on here called Are You Real Creatives? And we talked to artists, musicians, movie producers, all different types of uh, art. And uh, anyways, that being said, we had Darren Wilson on there from the past. And uh, he talked about his shows that have really impacted and made a difference in the Christian community. I'm really excited about today's show because he's going to be talking about a show or sorry, a movie that he's uh, about to produce uh, that I think is going to be phenomenal. So anyways, that being said, Darren, you ready to roar, my friend? Let's do it. All right. Roar. <laughs> All right. I did it for you. I've never done that, Darren. You were the first person I've roared for. Am I supposed to roar? Am I like actually supposed to roar? Well, you don't have to, but you could. I mean, if you feel like, it in you this like morning. Thing? Is that like, is that like your thing? Like, uh, uh maybe to roar. I think maybe I should start doing that now that you said that. I've only had like maybe a handful of guests ever do it. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the introvert, so we're probably, us introverts probably won't do it very much. Not happen. Okay. All right, Darren, <laughs> um, I know you were on the show before with Matt. It's been a long time. Why don't you, for our guests that have not gone back to previous shows, kind of give us an overview of who you are and what you do. Yes, yeah, so I'm a television and uh, film producer, director. Um, I make uh, very uh, unique, I guess you could call them, Christian faith-based documentaries. Uh, started back in, uh, my first movie came out in 2008 called Finger of God. Um, and I was basically, at the time when I first started, I was a college professor, I was an English professor. And I just borrowed equipment from my school and borrowed some money from uh, my, my family and and went out and made this this strange little movie about uh, miracles, trying to see if miracle, God was still doing miracles today. And uh, made the whole movie for like twenty thousand dollars, threw it up on Amazon, and walked away. And that was that was my marketing plan. And it turned into this massive underground hit. And uh, since then, I've made I think uh, six six other films. Um, so yeah, I, just, I basically my movies. I kind of travel the world, and I I'm I'm a real curious person. I have a lot of questions. Uh, about faith and about God. And so I just kind of, I make these movies mostly for me and I'm just happy that other people like them. Um, but really I just, I just travel around and I have some really wild friends who are willing to take big risks with me. And uh, we just go all over the world to, to try to film God doing God stuff. So that's kind of what we do. Okay. I'm going to ask you questions that have nothing to do with the film. <laughs> and I'm just curious. So in that um, time, like obviously you talked about God doing miracles and stuff. That's always depending on your religious background. For some people, some would say, well, you know, God quit performing miracles at, in acts or right. in Pentecost, stuff like that. Others would say differently. I'm just curious what you saw. I have not seen finger of God. I plan on actually watching some of that over the next week. What did you find and how did that affect your faith uh, positively or negatively? Yeah, well, I didn't, when I went into it, I mean, I was, I mean, when I went into my first film, I was at that point, barely a Christian. I was like, okay, just barely holding on. I grew so were, up you, a, were you skeptic? Very skeptical. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think I, that's good. I, I want people to know that. Yeah. I grew up in the church and, um, and it was just, to me, Christianity was the most boring thing in the world, but you had to believe it because you didn't want to go to hell. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's a good where, reason. Yeah, that's kind of where I was, and I was more—I think I was more interested in the concept of God at that point than I wasn't actually like, having a relationship with Him. 
And so when I started making this, this film, I, this, I, I was hearing about all these really strange things that were happening. Um, and one, and there's a very strange thing that happened in my own family that kind of sparked this whole thing. Um, that was a definite miracle and you couldn't, I couldn't like discount it because it was my family. And so that's what kind of like, let, like kind of pushed me into this stuff. And what I found as I travel the world, not just, not just overseas, but even here in the States is that, um, not only is God still, you know, in the business of miracles, but they happen way, way, way more than, than most people realize. Um, and, uh, and it's actually what I, what, what kind of, what I kind of left w with was that it's actually, I think the miraculous and the supernatural should be a, a regular part of a, of the Christian's life. Um, it just, it really boils down to how much do you want it, you know, cause God's, he's, he's gentleman. He's not going to force, you know, things on you that you don't want, but, at the same time, there's there's a the kingdom of God is open to all of us, and um, you know why not step into it in its fullness is what I what, what I kind of walked away with. Okay, um, I'm curious what was something that during that time, being a little skeptic, new believer, uh, what did you see or just give me an instance that really impacted you that you saw that like kind of just branded in your mind. Um, going to a village, a little village in, uh, in Africa and watching little children pray for a woman who was t completely deaf and, uh, she, she was, you know, completely healed of, of deafness. I mean, that was, you're seeing seven-year-olds praying for people and they're getting healed. I'm like, okay, this is, uh, this is interesting. Um, probably, you know, probably the biggest thing was the thing that sparked the movie. Like I mentioned my own family, my aunt and uncle, um, went to a, a church service, um, and their marriage was, was on the rock. So they were going to, they're on the brink of divorce. And this is kind of their last gasp. They heard God was moving in this church. And so they, they went into the church, um, and they walked out of the church service. Both of them had gold teeth. Um, they had their two, my, my aunt had one of her molars turned gold and my uncle had two. And you and, saw it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, they're still gold to this day and they've got yeah. the dental records, you know, and it's, I mean, he's my aunt and uncle, like, you know, she's right. a housewife and he's a superintendent of schools. So like, they're not like, they're not like trying like to create a ministry and make, make money off of this. It was just, but it was a thing that event was one of the things that, that ultimately led to the restoration of their marriage because they realized how much God lo loved each of them. And that was a lot of big part of their problems. They just didn't understand their worth um, and each other's worth in God's eyes. Mm, that is so powerful. I've had, uh, I've actually have some family that that happened to, and it was so hard for me and so skeptic at first. I mean, we, we could talk miracles all day, just even for my wife and I, but when I first heard that, obviously I was so skeptic until I saw it. And I just thought, you know, at first I'm like, well, are you sure you didn't get a gold feeling at first when you first got it? And they're like, they look at you like, what are you stupid? No. <laughs> Yeah, she went to her dentist afterwards, and he refused to acknowledge it. He wouldn't even talk about it. He's just like, I don't know. I'm, he just, he, it was just too much. It was like he was like he kind of like glitched out. <laughs> That's hilarious. You mentioned that you feel like that, uh, or not? Maybe you said you feel like, but that that uh, that miracles and the supernatural should be like an everyday part of our life. But obviously, the Father doesn't force that upon us because he's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. What do you think that looks like for people listening who maybe have never experienced that? And why do you say that? Well, I think for people who've never experienced it, it just mean, it, it means, okay, like how much are you willing to risk of your own faith? Because for me as a skeptic, that's what kind of kept me like, I didn't want this stuff to be true. You know, when I was, cause I really, I spent a long time examining my own skepticism when I finally pulled out and it wasn't that I felt like everybody was lying um, I, I would use that excuse, but I knew, I mean, not, not the whole, the whole world's not lying. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so for me, it was really like, I just didn't want it to be true because if it was true, then there's consequences to that. Right. Like I'm going to have to like react to this new found truth. And I didn't want to, cause I liked my normal little like safe Christianity that didn't ask anything from me. Um, but you know, that's not really what Jesus kind of said when he was setting this whole thing up, right? It's like, go, like, pick up your cross, follow me. Like, this isn't going to be like Easyville, 
you know, you have to actually go and like retouch other people and reach other people. Um, and it's not, everybody needs to become like a evangelist, but like just in your, whatever your sphere of influence is, it's like, you need to be like, um, bringing the kingdom of God with you. And for me, it doesn't mean everybody's like has to start praying for like, to try to like raise dead bodies. I just think it's like, I mean, for me, it became as simple as changing how I pray. When I'm praying for somebody, I'm not praying anymore for like the doctor's wisdom, you know, like this, that, you know, like, it's like, I'm actually declaring and I'm like, all right, let's go for this thing. Like, let's see if we, if, if the word, if we can just like walk in healing for this, like if my kid's sick, I'm going to pray for him to be healed. Like in Jesus name, you'd be healed. And so it's just kind of like stepping forward and like just being a little bit more bolder. Um, but then it's also, you know, after that, it's, it's just seeking out, you know, people who, who, who do this, do this on a regular basis and just, you know, it's, it, it's supposed to be like, we're a family. We're supposed to learn from each other. So I don't know. I just, I just feel like it just boils down to how badly do you want it? Um, and that's really, that's really what, to me, that's the, that's the, what it boils down to. Okay. So you said it kind of changed. That was my next question is just kind of how it changed your walk. Once you realize that God is obviously performing miracles and there is a supernatural that we don't understand. So it changed your prayer life. Obviously what are, what's something else that it, and maybe you could even go into depths of some of the repercussions of when you prayed things that you saw, but just kind of how that changed your walk. Cause you obviously went from a skeptic to, okay, kind of like, Oh crap, I got to go all in. Cause now I, re- <laughs> now I realize this is legit. So what am I going to do with it? How did that really change your faith in your walk? Well, okay. So, you know, I, I can't answer this question because it's not in a vacuum of finger of God. It, it's the, the answer to your question is over, five movies, right? Okay. Like it's over a 10 year period because it was a very slow kind of like morphing process for me where it's like, cause my first movie was about miracles. And so I'm like, okay, I woke up to that. Like, this is interesting. And then my second movie was about spiritual warfare and what God's Ooh, love. That's going to be fun, dude. Which, what movie is that? That's furious love. Okay. Um, and so that's all about, yeah, I went to the darkest climates I could find on the planet to just put God's love to the test. Like, is there anybody who's too far gone for your love? Um, and then I, then I, then I go into father of lights, my third movie, which is all about the father's heart. Cause I was scared to death of the father. I thought Jesus was great, but the father and I had some issues. Um, and then my, then my last two movies are about the Holy spirit, which always freaked me out. So it's like, it's a, it was this very long process of like kind of learning about the, the fullness of, of God's kingdom and like what it actually is made up of to get me to a point where it's, it's not about like just changing, like your prayer life or changing this, changing one or two things. It's about becoming friends with God. And so that's what, that's what this thing has led me to. And that's now this, that's all that I, when I write books, when I create films, um, all I care about is, is trying to get people passionate to be, to want to become a friend of God. Um, because that's what Jesus says. He says, I no longer call you, you're no longer slaves. I call you friends. And that's what I want. I want to be God's best friend. And when you, when you step into a friendship with somebody, um, you know their will, you know their heart, you know, you know, you know what they want in, in every situation. That's when you can truly walk in like, not just like power and, you know, just have an awesome life, but you're walking in true peace because you're, you're like at rest with God because he's your best friend. So that's what's changed for me is I'm no longer like fighting against God, running from him. I'm just, I'm really, really happy to be his friend. Darren, do you think it's a, obviously it's a process, but I'm just curious and I'm trying to think this out that we go from receiving Jesus as savior to understanding and then receiving God as father and then going as friend. And and the reason I'm asking that, and I do want you to answer this, but I'm just going to expand a little bit because I've been walking with the Lord now 20 years and I first experienced him for a lot of years is just understanding salvation and renewing my mind. And then I got to a place where I really, where I felt God was calling me in and he wanted to be a father Mm -hmm. and experience that. And that was really painful for me. Um, Years of just really soul searching and just, I feel like I got my butt whooped constantly. And then in a good way. So I don't want listeners to take that negative. And then it's really interesting. This last year, there's a Bethel song 
And uh, Jen Johnson singing, she says, I've known you as father and I've known you as friend. And, and every time I hear that, it just kept on like, that's all I heard for the entire song. And I just kept on hearing the Lord, like he's saying, I want, I want, I want you to come into a relationship as friend. And every time I read scripture, that would stand out. And all of a sudden, like I'm feeling this drawing is I want to show you what it's like to be friends, no longer just as father. And that's really been stretching it. it nothing like going into his father. That was hard for me. But this is like stretching. I'm like, well, heck, what does that look like? This is weird. Yeah. So I said all that to go back. Do you see the process in your life as you made films going as savior, father, and friend? Oh, it's interesting. You put that. When I look back, it's exactly the trajectory that it went. You know, it was, it was uh, yes, savior. From, I think a lot of people just stop at savior. You know, and, yes. and it's almost like we treat, I see a lot of, a lot of Christians treat Jesus as like, more like currency. <laughs> I've never heard somebody say that, but that's really good, dude. You know, where it's yes. like, it's, he's, your, he's your, he's your, well, I got my, I got my check to get out of, out of hell. So yeah. I'm good. Right. I, I, I can, I got, I can, I spent my Jesus money, so I'm good to go. And, um, but if there's so much more and what's great, what's great about God is if that's all you want to do, like, okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm, he'll, he'll love you. He'll bless you. But like, there's so much more. And yes. Yeah, so, and I think, but I don't think you can move into friendship with God until you've gotten the father piece because it's so integral to the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, it's all Jesus ever talked about was the father, right? Like, he came here to, sh- to point us to the father. So it's like, you have to get the father part because otherwise you're still an orphan and that's just not going to work. Um, because you, so, but then that, then that moves into, into friendship. It's almost like growing up, right? Like when you're, when you're a kid, your dad is like dad, right? And he's the, he's uh, like the fort, like a force of nature in a sense in your life. Um, but then as you get older, they like you transition. And if you have a good, relationship with your father you right. transition into friends like i'm friends with my dad right now whereas when i was a child i was like i just had to do what he said and i think i think it's similar with as you grow in god it's just it, it, it it's, it's a progression to come, to come into a friendship it's interesting i wrote that down and i've just never even thought about it. this is kind of a lot of revelation for me but it, you, you mentioned you said if you don't get the father you're still an orphan and i thought there's so much truth to that because i think in christianity I've realized just being done ministry now for 20 years and, and, and worked in the ch- or helped in the church that so many people are still orphans. Yeah. So like they've received Jesus, what we talked about earlier as savior, but they've never stopped stepped into the father part. And therefore they're, st- they're, they're saved orphans. Like they've been plucked out of the orphanage, but they've never received the fathering and the love Right. He has to give. So that's really good. Yeah. They've got, they've got a brother, you know, in Jesus, but they, but you know, they're, if all you're doing is living with your sibling and you don't have any kind of, you know, father figure, it's your, your, you know, your growth is going to be stunted. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I can't jump into your next film yet because you, you totally grabbed me on the, uh, <laughs> the supernatural. So we're going to talk about your film. I promise. The newest one, but Tell me about the supernatural one, because um, I got to tell you this. When we first got saved, like that was my experience. So I was totally skeptic about Christianity. I grew up a little bit in and out of church. So I would say it was more religious, obviously, than relational. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I had some very demonic, like supernatural encounters that were so dark, so unexplainable that I remember I just thought I was like, if there is demonic darkness this scary and this intense, then there has to be the opposite. And that was like our, our experience for like a year or two, not that just stuff would like attack us and come at us. Like we saw demons in our house and, and things that would happen that would just, I have to call friends that were evangelists and stuff and be like, listen, dude, I don't know what just happened but you need to explain this to me because it scared like the crap out of me. And yeah. I need, and, 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 oh, and I'll never forget. 
Well, I'll just tell you a quick story. So my wife and I were newly married. We're laying in bed and all of a sudden, like we wake up and our room is spinning and there's like a fog in our room and it's really, really thick. Like almost to the point, I remember reaching up and pushing my hand through it as if it was smoke. And and the room starts spinning almost like a tornado and we're kind of freaking out and you could just feel the fear just gripping us. And we just grabbed each other's hand and like, we were scared. I had no idea what was going on, but I knew it was demonic. And I could, uh, both of us, it felt like there was something pressing down on our chest and we could barely breathe. And it took everything we had. I just said, I rebuke you in Jesus name. And it was gone. And I remember, and I had to call a friend up and there were some things that had happened that had allowed that into our house. And he kind of walked me through it. But like, that was one of our first experiences. And I was like, what the heck is that about? <laughs> and, uh, and that was like our first experience in the supernatural. So I want to hear your stories. Cause I, I'm, I, I'm <laughs> like really intrigued because I think when people hear these, it's like, you can't deny the fact that this stuff's going on. So if there's, if there's black, there has to be white. Right. Yeah. So, so furious love, which is my second movie. It was really, it was actually born out. I didn't, I never started out to make a movie about spiritual warfare. It it was started out. The whole point of the movie was to, to, to get back to an understanding of what God's love actually was, was made of and what it felt like. Because again, I, I, like I said, I grew up in the church. Um, I was a good Baptist boy growing up. And um, by the time I was like in my mid thirties, I mean, the, the, the phrase God loves you, like had zero meaning to me anymore. It's a cliche, right? yeah. And it was funny because we like, we'll be, you know, when I film a lot of times we're filming just on the streets, we're filming the, you know, live as it happens. And, you know, sometimes we'll just tell somebody just, you know, you know, God really loves you. And they burst into tears. And I'm like, why are you crying? You know, it's like, this is like the most basic truth. Like it's the first song I ever learned that Jesus loves me. This I know, like it's, it, it didn't, it, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. And so I wanted, and that kind of, that kind of freaked me out a little bit um, when I started to think about it. And I'm like, I need to get back. I need to get back to understanding the potency of God's love. And so the only way I could think to do, to do that was to go um, to as, as far away from it as I could to see if, if there's any limits to it. Cause you, you know, I wanted to kind of, it's almost like uh, getting the, the polar opposite to see what it looks like. And so that's what I did. We just went to, I mean, I, I, we filmed in the sex trade in Thailand. We filmed at witchcraft festivals. Uh, I filmed at new age festivals, um, filmed just all over this dark, 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 like filmed with like a bunch of heroin addicts in the dumps of Madrid. Um, and what was fascinating to me was to watch that the darker we went, the brighter God's light shone. And, it, you know, probably the most, one of the most impactful things for me that was also the, the hardest thing for me was we were in Thailand and we we're sitting and we just started, struck up a conversation with this like older white man. Um, and I think he was, he was American and he was there and he was very open and very freely talking about how he was there to sleep with, with little boys. Mm. That was, that was his thing. And he, and you know, he's talking like it's, this is not a big deal, you know, back in the States it's, it's frowned upon, but here it's like, it's not, there's not, it's no big deal. Like they're cool with it. And I'm sitting here and I've got like two little boys, you know, just want to vomit. I'm sure. And I'm like, you know, you want to like, I just want to like grab this guy by the throat and throttle him. But like, I'm, I'm in the middle of this, this making a movie about God's love. And I realized like God actually loves this guy. Do you mean like this is this is his kid too, and he was, he's just so lost, and he's so you know but 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 like so that to me it was it was difficult because I'm like, how does God love us? <laughs> you know? I'm curious, how did that conversation go for you? Like, where did that lead? Because it was... didn't go anywhere. He, okay. he yeah, he didn't want anything. He was just I'm fine, you know. Like, but it was it was um, it was more eye opening for me to to realize like to look straight into like true, just darkness. Right. And, um, who's just has a smiling face and realize that man, God actually still wants this guy, you know, he loves any, he, any, he, he, he loves him and he's going to pursue him for the rest of his life. Um, so that was, oof, that was, that was a rough one, but mm-hmm. 
at the same time there, you know, we had all the things like, you know, we had a witchcraft festival, we had a witch, we were praying for a witch in a witchcraft festival. And, um, it's actually, it's like a male witch. I don't know what they're called, but, um, warlock, I guess. Yeah. But he had like the hood and everything. He was like full garb. Yeah. And, uh, and he was, he got so like touched. We started to pray. We were started. We, my friend was like prophesying over him. And then, then we said, can we pray for you? And he says, yeah, hold on. And so he like, he like removes his head covering and to let us pray for him. And, you know, it was like one of the coolest, like most powerful parts of the whole movie. But, uh, so just stuff like that where you're just, man, you just see God, he's not afraid of anything. Like we're afraid. And that, that's one of the, that's probably the biggest thing I learned from that is that Christians are so afraid of darkness because I think it's they're They think the boogeyman is going to jump on them and like start like haunting them. But I mean, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Like God is so much bigger when you turn on the light, the darkness has to flee. Right. So, and I just think it, for me, it was really about getting to a place of understanding of the authority that I walk in, in Christ. And there's really nothing that you have to fear. I'm glad you said that. That was exactly what I was literally just going to say is I think people are afraid of the darkness because they don't understand the authority of who they are. And because they don't know who they are in the kingdom, they allow fear to overtake them or kind of direct their attitude towards it because they don't take the authority they actually have. Right. Yeah. So we lock ourselves away. We create Christian versions of everything. You know, we like, we, we don't want to, we, we don't want to be tainted. We don't want to. And it's just, it's silliness. It's like, come on, there's this world is dying and we're just like shutting up, sh- shutting ourselves in our houses. <laughs> Go put ourselves in a box and hide. Yeah. It's just it, it, wait for just to return. Yeah. Right. Just, it's crazy. Okay, so we talked about uh, miracles, the supernatural. We're going to skip all the others. We're going to go into film <laughs> seven. Finally. Okay, the God Man. Yeah. So um, talk about, why don't you just give us a full overview of, kind of tell me why you feel compelled to do film seven, the God Man. So the God Man, I've never been more excited about a movie in my life. Um, okay. This is the reason I've been put on this earth, I fully believe. This is the this is the most important thing I'm ever going to do. Um, what I'm, what we're trying to do is create a Jesus, the Jesus film for a new generation. Um, you know, it, I feel like the world is, I've said this a few times now, but the world is on fire right now. Like it's just, everybody's going crazy, right? Everybody's shouting at the top of their lungs. Nobody's listening to each other. It's just, it, everything has gone political, uh, sexual, cultural, we're all just like, we're, we're kind of planting our flag on our, on our moral hills and just digging trenches. And I'm like, man, if ever the world just needed a reset of like a, a reminder of like, okay, really guys, it's all about Jesus, right? Especially Christians. Like it's about, we got to get back to Jesus and we, and the world just needs Jesus. So I want to make a film um, that, doesn't just talk about who Jesus really is and also deal with who he's not, but really, really to present who he truly is and what his heart and what his character is. But then I'm going to show you him in action. I want to, I want to actually show you Jesus doing Jesus things. So that's kind of the, the gist of what, uh, what this movie is about. And it, and it kind of runs along the lines, the parallel of, C.S. Lewis's famous uh, trilemma where it's, he's either one of three things. He's either a liar, he's a lunatic, or he's actually who he says he is, right? He's the Lord of all. Um, and he can't be a good teacher. He can't be just a wise prophet. He can't be any of that stuff. He's either, he's either fully God or he's a nut, right? And so this is just a movie that draws a line in the sand and says, okay, like, you know, and it, you have to make a decision. And, uh, you know, I'm calling this, you know, one of the things the Lord showed me early on in this is I remember I was, I was praying to him and I was, we were just kind of trying to have, I was trying to have a conversation with the Lord. And, um, I just helped, heard him say, you're, you're about to make the most dangerous film that's ever been made. And I'm like, I, what does that mean? And he said, you know, once people watch this, they'll no longer have plausible deniability. Um, so it's kind of a movie of like, watch at your own risk. If you don't want to have to, face a decision of like the biggest decision of your life. And it's probably not the movie you want to watch um, because there's only one of two answers that you can give. So uh, super excited about it, man. Super, super excited. No, I'm excited about it. So 
I want to ask you this because I feel like there's a cliche word that's thrown out. And the one that you first mentioned was Jesus loves you, right? Yeah. So we know the impact of that, but I think if you've been in church for a while, you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, unless you've never experienced it. But the other one that I feel like it's thrown out there that I've heard so many times is, you know, and you said it, the world just needs Jesus. But my question is why, like, what does that look like? And I, and I think you're going to answer that by obviously bringing it out in the film, but why does the world just need Jesus? Like, what does that look like? Okay. So I, to, 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 what I would answer that is, and I would say the church just needs Jesus. I'd, I'd go, not, it's not just like unsaved because a lot of times Christians will say the world needs Jesus. And what they mean is everybody just needs to get saved. Right. But to what end? Right. And, and, and that's why I feel, you know, we were kind of talking about this earlier in the podcast, like so many Christians just end with the currency part. Like, okay, I, I got into heaven. I'm good. But the point is to be transformed. Right. And the point is, the point is to become like Jesus. The world needs Jesus because if, because they need to become like Jesus, just like he told us to do. And what is Jesus? Jesus is love. And every problem that is in the world is a problem because people do not love each other. That causes every single problem. Jesus, I just read this the other day when I was doing my devotions, reading the word. Um, you know, if basically, if you love, if you love people, you fulfilled the law. You've, you've done exactly what you're supposed to do because nothing bad will ever come from love. And so that's why people need Jesus. That's why the world needs Jesus because it needs to like embrace love, which is forgiveness and grace and patience and, you know, all the stuff that like we don't have for each other right now. Um, it's what Jesus brings. You know, when you said that, the first thing I thought of is, but most people don't love themselves and you can't give what you don't have. And I think that's part of going back to our current conversation is going from savior to father and when we're fathered, we feel loved and we start to love ourselves. And therefore, I can't give what I don't have. So if I have the father's love, the overflow of my heart starts to become love for others. Right. Yeah. And, and the, yeah, and I think what you get, what you get, if you're not, if you don't love yourself, is you're, that's when it kind of can turn into self-righteousness. Um, that's when people start to use Jesus as a weapon, right? As a, you know, us versus them mentality, uh, because it's, you're trying to like make yourself feel better, you know, as opposed to like actually loving who you are and, uh, and accepting yourself because not because you're amazing, but because God accepts you. And I just think a vast majority of Christians are not there. And that's part, that's part of what this film is going to deal with as well. Okay. So talk more in depth about your film. What is it kind of going to give us a, um, a view into the making of it or kind of what you're going to portray. So as far as um, the movie itself, I can't, I'm not going to give the whole thing away. So the, the problem with talking about these films is I don't know what's going to happen yet. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, because like, you know, most documentaries like, well, we're going to go film this, 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 and this, and that's how it's going to be. And it's like this one, I'm like, I can tell you where we're going to go. I can't tell you what's going to happen. Um, what are you hoping to catch and hopefully portray? I want to catch Jesus. Uh, okay. So for instance, um, I'll give you an example. One of the places that we're going to be going is a, is a Rio de Janeiro. And, uh, there's a, a, a couple down there that does ministry in the dumps. And so we're going to go film with them. And the reason I'm doing that is, you know, again, I just, I, I read the Bible and Jesus says, if you want to find me, I'm really easy to find. You, you can find, you just go to the poor. I'm all, you can find me with the poor. So, okay, we're going to go to the poor. You know, we're going to go to the poorest of the poor. And, and I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea what, you know, what kind of people we're going to meet. I have no idea. It's not like, and none of this is set up. No, we don't set anything. I show up and, and I'm, I'm discovering things right along with, as the camera's rolling. Um, the only thing that's set up is like, Hey, I have a, I have a hotel to stay at. <laughs> that's the only thing I know. Yeah. going. But, um, but yeah, so we're going to be filming in Alaska. Um, I want to, there's a, I want, I feel the Lord telling me to go to a town in Alaska and basically spend a week and just, um, like a, a very small town and, and basically try to like, is it possible to kind of like touch an entire town in a week just by bringing Jesus, you know? And what does that look like? 
And so I don't know, we're going to go just try to figure it out. Uh, we'll be filming in Japan. Uh, I have no idea we're doing in Japan. I just know I'm supposed to go. That's what I mean. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of this stuff when they do these movies, I never know what, what we're going to do. It's, it's like you almost, I hear the Lord telling me to go somewhere and I go and the, the, the movie's kind of made up of us figuring out what's, why did he send us here? Um, and that's where it gets really powerful because you see God's hand on everything. Is that really fun, like a puzzle? Kind of like a, uh, I think it was that movie, uh, National Treasure, I think. Like yeah, it's very, so, yeah, it's, it's like that. I wouldn't say it's fun. I would say it's highly <laughs> stressful. You know, you're, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on a, on a, on a, a hunch, you know what I mean, on, on something you think you heard the Lord tell you. And could, that could also very well just be your own thought. So it's, it's so stressful, but then every single time he shows up and he does. I was something. just gonna say, Darren, like I get what you're saying, but I think God proves, like as a father, he shows himself faithful. And I think for you, I would say you have ten years and six films or more of a foundation of him doing this for you. So, I, I mean, I think there's always that little bit of curiosity, like, oh gosh, I hope you show up. But then you can look back at the foundation that he's set for years, and yeah. you're like. Well, he's always shown up. So you can almost look at it maybe more as like a treasure hunt now instead of like, oh gosh, I hope you show up. Yeah, it up. definitely is. But I, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Like it's still, it's still stressful. Um, yeah, no, for sure. There's, there's more, there's definitely more like expectation than I yeah. had in the beginning. Um, but it's, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. It's an interesting way to make movies. I wouldn't recommend it to too many people. <laughs> but um, it's uh, it's been a blast, and it's one of the great honors of my life to be God's documentarian. So, uh, so, so that's you know those that's kind of the adventure piece, and then we're going to have like a whole like an animated, uh, a really cool animated piece that's going to present the, like basically the fullness of the gospel, like from Jesus, Jesus from creation to um, to resurrection, and like a four and a half minute piece. Um, there's going to be a narrative, like a, a, a fictional story that's running throughout the whole thing. There's all kinds of stuff that's going to be in it. I'm talking to a lot of like scholars and, and uh, celebrities and just, um, you know, really smart Bible people to get to the, kind of the answer a lot of the questions that people have. Um, so, yeah, it's just like my movies are very, they're not boring. They're very quick and, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller. So I like to keep things moving and I like to make sure that you are never, ever bored. So... Um, that's what I mean. I just want to make a movie that, that the whole world wants to see, um, about my best friend. Awesome. I love that. Okay. Darren, as we wrap up the show, uh, a couple things, I'm going to give you the last of anything that you want to talk about. One of those being made, how we can, as an audience or people personally help you fund the movie. But I would also like you to promote maybe your last six films. If you want to shoot out the names of some of those, so people can go watch them to see what you're doing. And then also uh, one, how to uh, second, how to support you and how do we find you? Sure. Uh, okay. So let's start with the God man, because that's the biggest need. Um, okay. We're doing a, an Indiegogo campaign for it. Um, and uh, I need everybody's help. Uh, if you want to see a great movie about Jesus, come help me. Uh, so you, it's a, uh, it's Indiegogo. If you just search the God man, you're going to find it. Um, otherwise uh, you can find everything that we do uh, at our website. It's wpfilm.com. Uh, we'll have a link there as well to to the Godman campaign. Uh, the campaign runs through, I believe, February fourteenth. Okay. Uh, I think it goes till. So, um, yeah, please, please, please come and and support what we're doing. Lots of really cool rewards there for for the movie. Uh, but yeah, so Finger of God, Furious Love, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, and Holy Ghost Reborn, uh, and then uh, a buddy of mine I produced, but uh, buddy of mine directed Finger of God too. Uh, that came out last year. That's all, all on our website, wpfilm.com. Uh, that kind of, that, that's kind of the catch all place to get everything. Can we watch all these on your website? Uh, actually I, yeah, I have a, uh, actually I've, I just created over the last three years, I've been creating a streaming service called WPTV that has all the movies, all my, a gazillion television, television show to the television episodes tons of like extra behind the scenes, lots of, lots and lots and lots of extra interviews. We have like 400 hours of stuff on WPTV. It's insane. Um, so that you can find at, um, what is that? Uh, WPfilms.tv, I believe. Um, again, you can get to it through WPfilm.com as well. 
Uh, but yeah, you can you can rent the movies, you can buy the movies on our website. Uh, they're available on iTunes, Amazon. They're available almost anywhere there's digital. So uh, okay. not hard to find them. I'm on it. I'm going to check it out. Okay. But Indiegogo. Indiegogo, the God man. We need it. We need, we need, we need to get this thing going, man. We're going to start filming in, in May and it's going to be awesome. Okay. Roar Nation, I do want to tell you guys, sometimes you think that like, hey, $5, $10, maybe 20 or 100 means nothing. And I do want to say it does make a big difference. I've had people in our audience reach out and just say, hey, I felt led to give you some money. And, uh, and honestly, it always helps because there's a lot of costs behind the scenes that people don't realize. So I do want to encourage you guys, even if it's five, 10 bucks or you don't have much, I'd encourage you to go to Indiegogo and just help with a God man and help Darren uh, raise this money and just know that you were part of something uh, that I hope and that I think will be uh, impactful to this new, this generation. So, uh, Darren, what else you will wrap up the show, my friend? Uh, oof, that's pretty much it, man. That's uh, I'm just, I'm excited for people to, you know, if, if there's people who've like never, ever heard of me, uh, actually I'll tell you this. One of the things I get, the biggest question I get for people who've never heard of me, never heard of any of my movies. They're always like, what's, what's, if there's one movie you could watch, that I've made, what would it be? Where should I start? And I would say Father of Lights is probably the best place to start because it's with, it's about the father. Um, it's 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 really well done, but it's it's most people say it's probably one of the most powerful films they've ever seen, um, and I think that's because so many people have some so many issues with with the father. You know, we're just a we're a fatherless society, and um, I don't think people they just really struggle with that. So. Um, if you're going to start somewhere, start there. But uh, I just, yeah, I just want to just bless everybody who's been listening to this. Thank you. If you support, that's amazing. If you don't, don't worry. Um, but I just pray that everybody's blessed um, and that, that uh, you open your heart uh, a little bit more today um, to the things that the Lord is, is, is asking of you um, to his love and uh, to his friendship. I mean, ultimately, that's what he wants. He wants to be friends with you. As hard as that it may be to, to, to accept, that's what he wants. And um, so if you want more, all you got to do is ask. Amen to that. All right. Well, Darren, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, talking about your stuff. I'm excited to watch some of your films and uh, to pass those along. So I just want to thank you for stepping out in faith, you know, 10, 20 years ago or whatever, and uh, just doing it out of your own skepticism. It's just amazing to see what God's been able to do uh, through your journey and through your growth with him. So thank you. Well, thanks for having me, buddy. I appreciate Absol it. Absolutely. Hold on just a second. Roar Nation, uh, thank you guys. I hope you got some kind of some nuggets here and there uh, as things that we just talked about of who the father is, what he's doing. And uh, one of my biggest takeaways, obviously, from this is seeing is Jesus is savior and brother going to father and then friend because that's who he wants to be in your life and impact not just you, but the world around you. So I just encourage you today, as Darren was talking about, dive into that and just discover the supernatural of what God has for you. Remember, uh, please rate and review us on iTunes. Uh, if you need anything, please reach out. We're also about to release our newest book, Speaking God's Frequency, that we had multiple people contribute to. So you can email us about that. And uh, anything else you need, please reach out to Casey and myself. Remember, be real, be authentic, and be you. God bless. That's all for this episode of Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You. Be sure to go to areyoureal.org for your free questionnaire to identify your gifts and talents and how you can use them to help people become leaders and catapult them into their destiny to help others become the leaders of tomorrow. We appreciate you spending your time with us and look forward to helping you reach out and revolutionize next time on Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You.